The peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. And it's an honor and a pleasure for me to be invited for the fifth time to this Ramadan gathering. And I would like to thank the organizers, the Islamic Affairs, and the charitable activity of the way for organizing this event. And it's a great pleasure and honor for me to address to you the second time. And as mentioned by the chairperson, we'll be having an exclusive open question and answer session. I'd just like to repeat that please keep the questions brief, one or two sentences. If it's longer than that, it's a speech. So please keep your questions brief. Ask one question at a time. For the second question, you can go behind the queue. We first give preference to the non-Muslim brothers and sisters. And after the non-Muslims exhaust their question, we'll entertain the questions from the Muslims. Please mention your name and your profession before you ask the questions. Can we have the first question, please? We'll have the first question from the brothers. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Shokumar. I was a professor in the extreme south part of India. Uh, yesterday I asked a uh, doubt and I have got the clear answer. Today I have only one question about the hereafter. The hereafter, there is no proof and proof yet. No experience and also we can't experience. Then how do I believe that? Why I believe that? The doctor has asked a very good question that there is no experience, there is no proof about the hereafter. So why should I believe in the hereafter? And there's a talk I've given completely on proving the existence of hereafter, I will just try and prove it to you in two simple ways. Number one, that if you analyze the Quran, and if you put the test of science to the Quran, we come to know that whatever the Quran speaks about, today, 80% of whatever the Quran speak, approximately, can be proved to be 100% correct. The balance 20% is ambiguous. It is not known. Because science hasn't advanced so far. When the Quran was revealed 1400 years back, many things of the Quran were not discovered. And I've given the talk on Quran and modern science. But now, after 1400 years, most of the things have been proven to be scientifically correct. Today, approximately, 80% of whatever the Quran says has proved to be 100% correct. The balance 20% is ambiguous, is unknown. But from this balance 20%, not even one of the verses is proved to be unscientific. You may ask me, that I being a medical doctor, how do I blindly believe in this hereafter when science doesn't talk about it, when no one has gone and come back from it? So I say that my belief in the hereafter is not a blind belief, it is a logical belief. And I say that when 80% has proved to be 100% correct. So my logic says that inshallah, God willing, even the balanced 20% would be correct. Because not, not even 0.1% of the balanced 20% has been proved to be wrong. So there are many things which the Quran has mentioned, which science hasn't advanced so far to prove it. For example, Quran talks about jinn, Quran talks about angel, Quran talks that the first man on the earth was Adam, peace be upon him. Quran talks about heaven, Quran talks about hell, Quran talks about hereafter. So all these things, neither science can prove it today to be correct, neither science can say it is wrong. It is ambiguous, unknown. So my logic says, when 80% is 100% correct, and the balance 20%, not even 0.001% has been proved wrong. So my logic says that inshallah, God willing, even this 20% would be correct. This is one way 
of logically analyzing it. The other way is that I would like to ask you a question, brother. Is robbing good or bad? Brother, doctor, I would like to ask you the question. Is robbing good or bad? It depends. It's good or bad? I couldn't uh, get you exactly, sir. No, I'm asking you, is robbing? Robbing. Robbing, R-O-B-B-I-N-G. Is robbing uh, good or bad? Absolutely bad. Absolutely bad, okay. Is raping a girl good or bad? Bad. Bad, so okay. Now oh, you tell me robbing is bad. You tell me raping is bad. Now I am asking you a simple question. Can you give me one logical, I am, uh, hypothetically, hypothetically, I am a very logical person. I am a scientific person. I believe in reason and logic. And I happen to be the biggest mafia in this world. And I am asking you, and according to me, robbing is good. I can rob. If I rob a thousand dirham, I can go in a five-star hotel and eat food. I can see a movie. I can enjoy life. If I rob a million dollars, I can get a good villa in Dubai. According to me, robbing is good. Now you tell me, give me only one logical proof why robbing is bad and I will stop robbing. Only one. Only one, not two, three, only one. Why it is bad for me? For others, I'm not bothered. You prove to me logically why robbing is bad and I will stop robbing. Only one. You said absolutely bad. Because uh, we learn from our uh, parents. And we learn from, from parents, our elders. my parents, my grandparents we believed the world was flat. So do I believe in my grandparents? Everything what my grandparents said is not true. I asked you, give me one logical reason why robbing is bad and I will stop robbing. Only one. Sorry, sir, I don't know. Sorry? Sorry, I couldn't explain. You cannot give? Yeah. But you said absolutely bad. And you, you, I believe, is a logical person. Correct? It is totally prohibited. Totally prohibited you. I am a big mafia. You know, in Italy, you have big mafias, international mafias. Why robbing is bad? You prove to me I stop robbing. Can anyone help our brother? Why robbing is bad? Can anyone give one logical reason why robbing is bad? Only one. Only one reason I want. You are not the owner of the property. Okay, I am not the owner. I agree with you. I agree with you. But when I rob, I am benefiting or not? I am benefiting. I can enjoy. I can go to a five-star hotel. I can buy a big villa. Correct? I am agreeing. I am agreeing I am not the owner, but by robbing I become the owner. So why it is bad? Logically why it is bad? It's a property of another man. I agree with you. But when I rob it, it becomes my property. Am I benefiting or not logically? You know, you have to work and you get a salary of 30,000 dirham. I rob in one day, I get million dirham. Which is better logically? Uh, without uh, putting your worship and hard work, you are taking money Without from hard work. Brother, you go to the office and spend eight hours. I, in half an hour, rob one million dirham. I am more intelligent than you or not. Robbing is also hard work. <laughs> it's not easy. Right yes. or wrong? But is it is tot illegal now? Illegal. Yeah, illegal. Police will catch me. Brother, police is in my pocket. I told you I am a big mafia. The minister is on my payroll. I am international. You know, Italy you have mafias. The police is in my pocket. The minister is in my pocket. I am a big, big mafia. A small robber, if he robs, he will get caught. I am number one in the world. Why it is bad, you tell me I will stop robbing. Only one reason, one logical reason, scientific reason, I will stop robbing.
Can't think of any. You give two reasons, I give both the answers to that. Can anyone help him by robbing his dad? Sorry? Brother, that person doesn't believe in hell or heaven. Where's the question of going to hell? You are answering on his behalf, correct? If you are answering on his behalf, you have to put yourself in his shoes. You should put yourself in his shoes. Can anyone help him in his shoes? Sorry? My? You are harming someone. I agree with you. When I am harming someone, it's not... I am benefiting. When I am harming someone, I can eat good food in a five-star. I can buy a villa. I can buy a Rolls Royce. So what difference does it make? Is harming good or bad for me? It doesn't make a difference. I told you, prove to me logically why it is bad for me. When I rob someone, it is bad for the person who is being robbed. But is it bad for me? No. I am taking somebody else's property. What difference does it make to me? When I take somebody's profit, property, he will go in loss, but I will benefit or not. Sorry? The? The rights. You follow your rights. I am following my rights. See, I am a logical person, scientific person. Prove me logically and scientifically. I am giving you a logical reason when I rob a million dirham every day, every second day. I can buy villa, I can buy Rolls Royce, I can go to the best hotel. It's benefiting me and I'm a big mafia. The answer he gave, the police will catch me. Police is in my pocket, the minister is in my pocket. Can anyone think of any better? Sorry? Yes, so you prove to me it is wrong. No, I don't believe it is wrong. And hear you. That person doesn't believe. You are answering on his behalf. Sorry? It creates chaos, yes. It creates chaos for the other, not for me. For the others it creates chaos. They'll get scared. But for me it benefits me. What difference does it make to me? I'm a minority. I don't know everyone to become a big robber like me. I'm, t I'm asking that person, prove to me logically why it is bad for me. I agree with you. Majority would suffer, but I'm enjoying. Why it is bad for me? If you want to stop something from someone from doing something, you have proof to him it is bad for him. Whatever answer you give, whether police will catch you. Some will, will say it's against humanity. Brother, I, who wrote this book called Humanity? It's not bad for me. Whatever answer you give, someone will say, someone will say that one day someone will rob me. Brother, I have got 50 bodyguards all behind the stage. All with AK-47. I'm a big mafia. I can rob anyone, no one can rob me. Sorry? When I'll become injured? How will I become injured? Why will I become injured? Why will I become injured, huh? I don't know. I've, I've got battery of doctors also. You know the big, when they travel with doctors, I've got many doctors with me. Logically, whatever answer you give, you cannot prove to me that this person cannot prove to me that robbing is bad. He said it's absolute. Now let's turn the tables over, brother. Now you become that mafia. I am now Zakir Naik. Okay? I'm a Muslim. And if I tell you robbing is bad, you tell me why it is bad. I can rob, I can go to a five-star hotel, I can buy a villa, I can buy Rolls Royce. If I tell you it's against humanity, you will tell me who wrote this book called Humanity. If I tell it will hurt other people, no problem, but doesn't hurt you. Whatever answer I give, I cannot prove to you robbing is bad. But I will tell you about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've given the talk on, does God exist? Time will not permit me to give the full talk here. And scientifically, with the help of the Quran, I have proved to you, I will prove to you the existence of God. Brother, I'm sure you believe in God. Correct? Right or wrong? Yes, sir. Yes. You believe. Fine. Anyway, for more details, you can refer to my video cassette. I have proved to the people scientifically and logically with the help of the Quran, comparing with science that God exists and Allah is one. Now, even if Allah is there, you will tell me 
if I tell you robbing is bad, the answer you will give the same. Only way you can prove wronging is bad, not only with the existence of Allah alone, with existence of Allah, I will also tell you, I will ask you, I will ask you that brother, brother, if some evil is done to any of your family member, wouldn't you want justice for them? Wouldn't you want justice for them? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Now my question is, you see around us, there are many people who are robbers and they lead a very good life and they die peacefully. Hitler. Hitler insinuated six million Jews. Even if the police catches him today, what can they do to him? So don't you think there should be justice? So when you believe in one supreme God, how can there be justice? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. And the final recompense is on the day of judgment. This life is nothing but mere chattels of deception and amusement. Allah says that the final recompense is on the day of judgment. In this world, you do not get your complete justice. Partly you can get, partly you cannot. Maybe if you're a small robber, police may catch you. Sometimes they may catch you, you may get justice here. Many small robbers, the police don't catch. So Allah says in the Quran that your final recompense, your final judgment is on the day of judgment. So there has to be a hereafter. Without the hereafter, you cannot be robbing is bad. Suppose you are a very big mafia. You have got 50 bodyguards with you with AK-47. No one can rob you. If you keep on robbing people, in this world, maybe you will lead a very luxurious life. But this world, on average, a human being lives for, lives for about 60 years. Some people die at the age of 20, some at 40, some at 60, some at 80, some at 100. But average human being lives for about 60 years. But this life compared to the year after is 0.0001%. In the year after, if you rob, you may lead a luxurious life here. But in the year after, God will punish you. So there has to be a year after. So if you rob, then God will punish you in the year after. In this world, all the, all the crime you do cannot have a punishment. As I told you, if the police had caught Hitler, and if you catch Hitler today, who has insinuated six million Jews, what punishment can you give him? What punishment can you give him? We'll give the maximum punishment. Maximum. What is the maximum punishment you can give? What is the maximum punishment you can think of? Uh, death. Death. Death by incineration, death by burning. Is it equal to six million people he killed? No, absolutely not. So is it a just punishment? Does the punishment justify? No. No. If you kill once, you will come five million, uh, 999,999. What about the other people? That means your punishment is illogical. That there is in this world, even if the police catches you, whatever law of the country you have, you can give part justice if you catch the criminal. You cannot give complete justice. The complete justice can only be there if you believe in God, and only believing in God is also not sufficient. You also believe in the hereafter. That is the reason one of the pillars of Iman in Islam is believing in hereafter. If you do not believe in hereafter, you cannot be a Muslim. So there has to be a year after in which there is punishment and reward. So if you do this evil thing like robbing and go scot free here, raping and you go scot free here, on the day of judgment, you will be put to hell. And the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 56, that as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh, you cannot feel the pain. Almighty God says in the Quran, as often as your skins are roasted, we shall give you fresh skin so that you shall feel the pain. So if Almighty God wants, he can burn Hitler six million times. He can even burn him 12 million times. Is this justice or not? Yes, sir. That means all the crimes 
the crime you do maybe you can get part justice here you can get part punishment complete punishment you can never get many of the criminals when they go to the court they get scot free because the lawyer is very good allah subhanahu wa taala has all the knowledge on the day of judgment the quran says even your organ will be witness against you so that no one can escape and if you have done a crime which requires to be killed 6 million times allah can do it in the hereafter it cannot be done here that is the reason without the existence of hereafter you cannot prove logically that robbing is bad you cannot prove logically that raping a girl is bad most of the evils you cannot prove it is bad unless you believe in the existence of hereafter you have to believe in god as well as existence of hereafter hope that answers the question brother yes sir Thank so brother you. do you believe in existence of hereafter now yes sir yes. very good do you believe in one god yes do you believe that idol worship is right or idol worship is wrong it's right idol worship is right or wrong idol no. worship oh, it is used only for the beginners when they are going for the spiritual they are not uh, totally believe that idol can confess this is what the pandits say but yes. if you read the hindu scripture yes hindu scripture says in swata swata upanishad chapter number 4 verse number 19 as well as ajurved chapter number 32 verse number 3 na tasya pratima asti it's a sanskrit quotation which says of that god there is no pratima pratima is a sanskrit word which means an image a photograph a painting a picture a sculpture a statue it says na tasya pratima asti of that god there is no pratima there is no image there is no photograph there is no painting there is no picture there is no statue there is no sculpture who says that yajurve yes. chapter 32 verse number 3 now you are telling me initially for concentration it requires the muslims we have already reached the higher level of consciousness we don't require idol worship almighty god and if you read your scripture the hindu scripture the veda the upanishad it is totally against idol worship it is the pandits who tell you that initially for concentration you require now would you like to follow the veda or would you like to follow the pandits veda so in your scripture it is clearly mentioned that the reason there are certain sects of hinduism for example sanatan dharma they don't believe in idol worship yes because nowhere in your in your shruti shruti means the higher scriptures of hindu religion veda and upanishad nowhere in the shruti nowhere in the upanishad nowhere in the veda does it talk about idol worship so do you believe idol worship is wrong no do you believe idol worship is wrong yes very good you believe there is one god you believe idol worship is wrong brother do you believe that prophet muhammad is the messenger of god yes sir i believe that you believe yes alas so the two things required for any human being to become a muslim is number one to believe that there is one god and that god has got no image and number two to believe that the last and final messenger is prophet muhammad yes sir peace be upon him even if you read the hindu scriptures if you read the hindu scriptures muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been prophesied in several places he is mentioned bhavishya purana parvatri khandatri adhyatri shloka 5 to 8 He prophesies in Bhavishya Purana, Parvatri Khandatri, Adhyati, uh, Shloka number ten to twenty seven. He prophesies even in Kunta Suktas in Atharva Ved, book number twenty, hymn number one twenty seven, verse number one to thirteen. He prophesies in more than hundred places, and a detailed prophecy is given in Kalki Purana. If you read Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number five, seven, nine, eleven, fifteen, it says. that the last and final avatar to come his father's name will be vishnu yas vishnu means father uh, vishnu means god yas means servant means servant of god if you translate to arabic it is abdullah so the name of the last and final messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam abdullah it's mentioned kalki purana the name of the last avatar his mother's name would be sumati sumati means serenity peace if you translate to arabic it means amina the name of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mother was amina it says that he will be born in a village by the name of sambala meaning peace muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born in the city of makkah which is a city of peace he will be born in the family of the chief of that village and prophet muhammad peace be upon him was born in the family of quraish which was the chief of makkah it says that he will be a messenger for the whole of humanity 
and the Quran says in Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 107, Allah says in the Quran, Mama arsalnaka illa rahmatil alameen, that we have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of human beings. It further says, he will get the first revelation at night. And we know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, got the revelation at night. He will get the revelation in a cave. We know from history he got it in Gara Hira. It says he will migrate northwards and come back. We know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Madinah and came back. It says he will have four close companions, talking about the four Khulfa Rashidin. So all these prophecies are given in detail in the Hindu scripture. So brother, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes sir, he is a lost messenger. I believe him. MashaAllah. So the minimum two criteria required for any human being to be a Muslim is to believe there is one God yes. and there is no idol worship and to believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. That means according to me you are a Muslim brother. Yes, sir. So would you like to say it in Arabic? Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes sir. Is anyone forcing you to become a Muslim? No, absolutely not. Are you doing out of your own free will? Yes. Is anyone pressurizing you? No. Inshallah, say it in Arabic and we can repeat it. Ashadu. 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 Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abguru. Wa rasuluhu. Wa shur. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. I am Prophet Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. And servant. And servant. Of Allah. Of Allah. MashaAllah, I become a Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That may he grant you Jannah. In the year after. May he put you in paradise. And I pray to Allah. When a person becomes a Muslim. All what you have done. Any sin that you have done till today. It is forgiven. All the good things you have done is there in your record. A beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that moment a non-Muslim becomes a Muslim, all his previous sins are forgiven, irrespective of how big it was. All the good deeds that you did is there in your account. All the evil you have done is wiped out. And I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa may He through you get other people to the straight path. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Zakallah khair. <clears throat> Inshallah, I just want to also make a quick announcement. If there are any non-Muslims who are outside the hall, the hall is already packed, alhamdulillah, but we've also made arrangements outside. So if there's anybody watching the program from outside, and if there's a non-Muslim who would like to pose a question to Dr. Zakir Naik, then please contact a volunteer that's near to you, and Inshallah they will bring you in so that you get a chance to have your question put forward. We'll take the next question from the sister side. Is there any non-Muslim at the sister side? Uh, yes, we have a shahada from a sister here. Can you have the sister on the mic, please? She's close to the mic now. Sister, do you believe there is one God? Yes, I do believe. Sister, may I know what your background was? Were you coming from a Hindu background or a Christian background? Your religion. I'm a Christian. Sorry? Christian. You are I'm a Christian? Christian, yes. Sister, do you believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is he God or is he a messenger of God? Yes, I believe. Messenger, mashallah. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? Yes, I believe. Mashallah. May I know your name, sister, and from the, which country you are coming from? You're coming from Philippines? Yes. Masha, what's your name, sister? Name. Rose. Feroz. Okay, sister. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Are you doing out of your own free will? Yes. Is anyone pressurizing you to accept Islam? No. Inshallah. I say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Abduhu, Varsuluhu. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness 
that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger and servant of Allah. MashaAllah, become a Muslim and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He grant you Jannah and may He through you get other people to the path of Islam. Jazakallah shukran. Allah and those who are reverting to Islam, inshaAllah, please do get in touch with the volunteers that are around you. Inshallah, they will guide you through the steps of formally getting into the paperwork and everything, inshallah, and also for you to get more knowledge about the subjects of Islam. I see, alhamdulillah, there are a lot of questions and a lot of people queuing up for questions. Inshallah, let's take the next one from the brothers. Okay, let, let's have the brother on the mic. My name is Mr. Victor from Nigeria. So today... What's also, your name, brother? My name is Mr. Victor. I'm from Nigeria. Mr. Victor. Yeah, today I want to make myself a Muslim because Mashallah. Allah has chosen me to, make, to be a Muslim today. Sorry, I did not hear your last sentence, brother. Because of the clapping, I did not hear your last sentence. You want to become a Muslim because? I want to become a Muslim because I know about Muslim for the past eight months ago. I was with Muslim, so I know about Muslim. Most. MashaAllah. Brother, do you believe there is one God? Huh? Do you believe that there is one God? I believe that there is one God. MashaAllah. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God or a messenger of God? Jesus Christ is the messenger of God. Mashallah. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Muhammad is not the messenger of God. So do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of God? Yes, I believe. believe. Mashallah. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nobody is forcing me. Are you doing it of your own free will? Yes. Inshallah, I said in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Yes. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Mu ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, is the messenger and servant of Allah. And of Allah. Mashallah, become a Muslim and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to grant you Jannah and me through you get other people to the fold of Islam. Jazakallah shukran. So, uh, Lusa, I, I told you I am Victor, I need to have a Muslim name. Muslim name? Yes. Mashallah. Whether I would, I would suggest that if you can keep your name as Bilal. Bilal. Bilal was the name of one of the companions of the Prophet and he was the person who gave the first azan and he had a beautiful voice. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that through you, you will get the other people to the fold of Islam. Yes, so now Muhammad, you can call yourself as Bilal. Bilal. Muhammad Bilal. Only Bilal no problem and whatever your surname was there in the past, you can keep that same surname. Okay, your father's name would be same? I love it. Sorry, so whatever is your surname, what it was there, it remains the same. Because the Prophet said, whatever family you come from, we come to know your family tree. So, so whatever your, your surname would remain the same, your name is Bilal, and the surname you can maintain whatever it was earlier, brother. Thank Inshallah. You. Thank you. Shukran. MashaAllah. And it's only Bilal and the brothers and the sisters are reverting. They know this feeling and how they go, what the feeling they have upon saying the Shahada. Subhanallah. Let's go ahead with the question from the sister side. If there's any non Muslim sister that likes to pose a question. Uh, we have another Shahada, inshallah. Inshallah. Let's have the sister on the mic, please. Yes, she's here. Please, ma'am, your name, sister? Uh, Beni. Where are you coming from? Uh, India. India, Masha. You're a Christian background, I believe. Yes. Masha. Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is he a messenger or is he a God? Do a you... messenger. Masha Allah. 
Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger? Yes, I believe. Mashallah. Inshallah. <laughs> is there any is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Are you doing it out of your own free will? Yes. Because in Islam, you cannot force anyone to accept Islam. If anyone does of the free will, they are most welcome. But in Islam, it is prohibited to force anyone to accept Islam. Sister, inshallah, I will say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. I said in Arabic, inshallah. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa hadlatu. Wa hashadu. Wa hashadu. Anna. Anna. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. I'll just repeat it. We can say it again, inshallah. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. 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 Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. But Allah. But Allah. And. And. I bear witness. I, I bear witness. That. That Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, is the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah, become a Muslim sister. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He grant you Jannah. And may He forgive all your sins. And inshallah, through you, may He guide the other people to the straight path. Jazakallah shukran. Let's have the next question from the brother's side. My name is Simeon. A Nigerian, I count it a privilege to be in this gathering of peace. My question goes like this. What is the difference between the mission of Muhammad and Jesus Christ? The brother asked a very good question. What is the difference between the mission of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brother, basically, the mission of Prophet Jesus and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them both, is exactly the same. Both of them, they submitted the will to Almighty God, and they came to preach about Tawheed, about the oneness of Almighty God, and that you have to believe and worship Him alone and no one else. And both of them, were one of the five mightiest messengers of Almighty God. So the mission was the same. But, as you know, the first messenger of Almighty God was Adam, peace be upon him. And later on, there were many messengers who came. By name, 25 are mentioned in the Quran. But the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, there were 124,000 messengers sent on the face of the earth. By name, 25 are mentioned in the Quran. Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. And the message of all the messengers was the same. That believe in one God and worship him alone. And as time went on, when the messenger came, many people believed. But due to passage of time, the message got corrupted. Almighty God sent a revelation. After several years, it got corrupted. Almighty God sent a new revelation and a new messenger. In this way, 1400 years back, the last and final revelation, that is the glorious Quran, if there's something like the Old Testament and the New Testament, then Quran is the last and final testament of God. And the last and final testament of God, that the glorious Quran, was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And all the messengers that came before, if you read the scriptures, whether it's Jewish scripture, or the Christian Bible, or the Hindu scriptures, or the Buddhist scriptures, all these scriptures prophesize the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you read the Bible, even in the Bible, it's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, about the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa These prophets have in various other places, including the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse number 12, he's, he's mentioned by name in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse number 16. 
He's even prophesied in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse 26. He's also prophesied in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, as well as Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that year shall he speak, he shall glorify me. Now here Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is telling his followers that I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot understand it now. When he, when the last and final messenger will come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that dear shall he speak. And we know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, got the revelation of the Quran. And whatever he got revelation from Almighty God, he repeated verbatim. He shall glorify me. The only messenger who has glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the basic mission was the same, but Almighty God knew when is the right time to reveal the last and final revelation. All the previous revelation that came, the basic message was the same. But the ultimate form, the complete form, is there in the glorious Quran, which was revealed 1400 years ago. And Almighty God, when He reveals the last and final revelation, He says in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, it's a verse number 9, that I have revealed the Quran and I shall guard it from corruption. The last revelation that Almighty God has revealed to the last and final revelation, the glorious, the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, no one can corrupt it. Because Almighty God has taken upon himself that he will guard it from corruption. So both are messengers of God, both are mighty messengers of God, but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final revelation. He's the last and final messenger to whom was revealed the last and final revelation. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the Bible, he only came for the Jews. The difference between Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, according to the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49, it says that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger to Bani Israel. Similarly, it's mentioned in Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse number 9, that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse number 6, that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was sent for the children of Israel. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 10, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says to his followers, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Gentiles are non-Jews. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost ship of the house of Israel. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells his apostles, his followers, that only preach to the Jews. Similarly, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I have not been sent, but to the lost ship of the house of Israel. All the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the major difference between them and the others is, that all the messengers that came before the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent only for their people and the message was meant for a particular time period. But Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humanity. As Allah says in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةَ لِلنَّاسِ That we have sent thee but as a messenger to the whole of humanity. It's mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 24. And Surah Ambiya, chapter, 20, chapter 21, verse 107, it says that we have sent thee not but as a mercy to the whole of humankind, as a mercy to the full world, as a mercy to all the creatures. That's the reason today, today, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs. And the Quran is not revealed only for the Muslims or the Arabs. The Quran is revealed for the whole of humankind. So irrespective whether you are living in India, or in Dubai, or in Saudi Arabia, or in America, or in Europe, or anywhere in the world, you have to follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the last and final revelation, glorious Quran. Hope this answers your question, brother. Yes. Brother, do you believe in one God? Uh, permit me, when you are explaining the question, there are some reference you made from John. Yes. John chapter 3 from verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that world 
he gave his only begotten son. And in your explanation, you made me know that this is the first messenger and this is the last messenger. I want to know more about that statement there. What you quoted, brother, is half the quotation. I'll give the full quotation. What you quoted of Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, the full quotation say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him, he shall not die but have everlasting life. This is the full quotation from the King James Version of the Bible. But brother, when you read the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 scholars, 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different Christian corporate denominations, they say that this word begotten in the Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they've removed it from the Bible. So this word begotten is an interpolation. What is the meaning of the word begotten? What is the meaning of the word begotten? Brother, okay. it's a, you use the word. I'm asking you what is the meaning of the word begotten? Begotten is an act belonging to lower animals. It's an act of sex belonging to lower animals. How can you attribute such an act to Almighty God? That's the reason this word begotten is an interpolation, is a fabrication. It is nowhere there in the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. As far as calling Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as son of God, if you read the Bible, the Bible had got, in the Bible, Almighty God has got sons by the tons. Adam was son of God, according to the Bible. If you read the Bible, it says that many were sons of God. Ephraim was son of God. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John. Gospel of John. It says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. It's mentioned in the Romans. Group chapter number 8. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So son of God is a terminology used in the Bible for anyone who is a godly person. That means he follows the commandment of God. If you follow the commandment of God according to the Bible, you are a son of God. If I follow the commandment of God, I am son of God. This word terminology, son of God, Bible has got sons by the tons. David was son of God. Adam was son of God. Ephraim was son of God. Israel was son of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So in that way, if you say that Jesus Christ, peace be was son of God, that he was a godly person following the commandment of God, I believe, because he was a messenger of God. But if you say he is a begotten son, I take objection. Because that word begotten is interpolation. Who says that? 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different Christian corporate denominations. That's the reason I say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. I challenge you. I challenge you to point out from anywhere in the Bible a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement in which Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or why he says worship me. I am ready to accept Christianity. If you point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. This is the teaching of the church. Not of the Bible. Brother, do you believe in the Bible or the church? I believe in the Bible, which is the word of God. Correct. So point out from your word of God, the Bible, where does Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, unambiguously, unequivocally, that I am God or worship me. Man, only one statement. He only say uh, in John chapter 8, verse 32, of the Bible, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Correct? Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's what I'm telling you. Seek the truth. Where does the Bible say that Jesus is God? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that seek the truth. That's why you have come here to seek the truth. Correct? Now, yes. where does the Bible anywhere where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, unequivocally, 
unambiguously said that I am God. Permit me once again in us of apostles send you this. Yes. Which will lead your comfort to you. Correct. What did the stand of the Islam concerning that spirit he sent us? What you're talking about yeah. is from the Gospel of John, chapter number 6, verse number 7. It says, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. The word used is comforter. This word in Greek is perikletos. The perikletos means the praiseworthy. But they translate it into comfort and I've got no problem. This, what he's talking about, is no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We as Muslims believe in the Archangel Gabriel. And we believe that the comfort of what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, talked about in the Bible is no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brother, if you cannot point out from anywhere in the Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself said unimpurely that he is God, then why do you believe Jesus is God? You have answered my question. Yes, I have answered your question. Yes, but you haven't answer. answered my question. <laughs> I have answered your question, I know that. But you have not answered my question. I when am. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not say anywhere himself that I am God or worship me, then why do you consider him to be God? I follow Jesus Christ more than you, peace be upon him. We know that. Brother, are you circumcised? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the Gospel of John. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Majority of the Christians are uncircumcised, but Muslims are circumcised. Brother, do you have alcohol? Do you have alcohol? No. Do, do, you, do you have al Do you drink alcohol? I don't drink alcohol. Never, never do you drink? No, I, I don't. Never or sometimes you have? Never did you have alcohol in your life? I have. Yeah, that means you have, sometimes you have, no? Uh, but at, uh, with time I stopped it. Based on the word I told you, when you know the truth, concerning the word of Jesus, concerning what God demands from us, that's the more reason I put a stop to it. So you stopped having alcohol now? Yes. Very good. Do you have pork? What? Pork, pork. Do you eat pork? No. Did you have before? No, I don't have. Very good. Now you don't have alcohol because Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 18 and book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse number 1, do not be drunk with wine. Very good. It's mentioned not to have pork in various places in the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 14 verse number 8. In the book of Leviticus chapter number 17 verse number 5. Also book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse number 2 to 5. Not to have pork. Very good. So, but the first question is not answer yet. That Jesus Christ peace be upon the mom circumcised on the 8th day. So if you say you are a Christian, and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you read the Bible and you look at the Muslims, if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. You know, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 and 18, if you break one jot or tittle from the law, from the Old Testament, you shall not enter paradise. It's mentioned in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament that the woman should be covered, the head should be covered. The women folk, they should do the hijab. That means they should be modest. So if you analyze as far as the Christians are concerned and Muslims are concerned, the Muslims follow more teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as compared to the Christians. Brother, coming back to my original question. Can you point out from anywhere in the Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity? That he said, I am God, or where he says, worship me? No. So why do you believe that he is God then? The Bible says, <laughs> in that John chapter 3 verse 16, he gave his only son. And you have now put in a light, because the more reason I am here, but where does I it say I am God? Privilege, I told you earlier, mm. Bible, in the Bible, God has got sons by the tons. And my question to you, 
All of them are peace be, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. None were God. They were messengers of Right or wrong? I request you, brother, you go home and you study. You study the Bible. And inshallah, you'll find out that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God, but he's the messenger of God. And the day you realize that, that God is one, and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the messenger of God, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, I would request you to accept it and come into the fold of Islam, inshallah. So I would request you to study the Bible and to find out the truth that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God, he never claimed divinity, but he's the messenger of God. I hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you very much.